You're watching Dukas Copy TV. I'm Elaine Stence and I'm joined in the studio now by Murtaza Assad Sayed, who's president of the Investment Strategy Association here in Geneva. You're very welcome, Murtaza. So Come improving on. macro in 2014 has been the key assumption for investors' bullishness. Have recent figures been so bad that to explain the recent market drop? Um, I don't think so. The figures are quite good. Um, some in the U.S. have been uh, and been damaged by, I would say, weather weather um, issues. But overall, numbers are, are, were good. Um, the issue maybe is the end of 2013 was f maybe excessive optimism uh, about w what would be uh, 2014. So I think it's not about the macro that have been disappointing. It's maybe about the market maybe a little bit ahead of itself and making a, a slight correction in in this uh, January. And how would you describe recent trends in Europe? I think Europe was uh, maybe the, the key, the key uh, issue in 2013, uh, like the laggard in terms of, of um, uh, economic cycle and recovery, and the, bet, the consensus bet, and, and was that 2014 would be, uh, would be bottoming out and accelerating um, growth in, in, in Europe. We see numbers, uh, overall PMI for the whole region, uh, in line with, uh, I would say, consensus expectation about 1% or just below 1% growth in 2014. Uh, um, so overall, um, things are coming out yes. nicely. But I think the, maybe the, the issue with Europe is not over Europe as a whole, maybe, maybe the details inside Europe. And given the disparity, do we still have one Europe? Uh, for 2014, no. I, w uh, I don't think uh, looking at Europe as a whole uh, makes sense. I think there is really three Europe. Uh, Europe of the, the, Latin, the Latin country or Mediterranean countries uh, that are really uh, on a tight restructuring and, and they are improving. Um, I would say it, on the short term, maybe a little bit above expectation, but some long term issue remains. Uh, Spain is doing a lot of efforts and have been, uh, I think, recovering uh, a little bit faster of uh, what the what market were expecting, or at least uh, economists. Um, long term issue remains, and current account deficits in in Spain will will still re be an issue. The, the second Europe is really at the opposite is Germany, Germany and the manu manufacturing core of of Europe, maybe with northern Italy, with Switzerland, with the Czech Republic, uh, and even part of Poland. This manufacturing machine is really. Uh, booming and IFO, uh, IFO, the PMI for Germany, just last week were, uh, were released at the three year high, I think, above 110, which is a very large expansion. And it's, I think, everything is fine. It's the, the Goldilocks for, for Germany. Um, and this is, I would say, the other extreme in Europe. Now, the third Europe, which is, I think, in, in a new phenomenon, is, is France. France used to be average Europe. Uh, now it's going to be bottom Europe. And it's very surprising to have France, which was sort of average between the two, yeah. uh, in fact being the laggard. And, and 2014 might be, uh, at least for on my side, might be the, the, the big disappointment uh, for Europe. Uh, what is going to happen in France where we see an incredible gap between Germany in Europe that has, uh, Germany and France that have, we have not seen that for the maybe the past 15 years, uh, that Germany is so ahead with expansionary on, in all segments, and, and France, which is in contraction. When you look at PMI in manufacturing, uh, surveys are improving, but they're improving saying it's less bad, but it's still in contraction. They're below 50, which is contractionary mode, and this, this dichotomy is very rare, and will, I think, affect uh, the ECB policy making, and also the discussion between where Europe should, should, should head for the next uh, three to five years. Okay, and over to the US for a minute. Confidence was high enough last year for, them to, for the Fed to introduce tapering, but is 2014 going to live up to expectations? Um, question mark in the US, I think, and, and this might be uh, what the market might, might uh, reprice is, what if there is a risk of, of disappointing growth in 2014? Numbers are fine. Uh, there was this winter uh, effect in January that the winter is always in January, but uh, there was like snowstorm and, and, uh, and really uh, freeze in, in, uh, in some places that 
damage the manufacturing sectors so, and construction. So we'll see in coming months if this was a bleep or uh, is something more serious. What is more serious in the US is the capital expenditure cycle. Capital expenditure is key for this growth to have another leg and bring job growth, job uh, employment that will really uh, foster growth for the next two years. Um, CapEx was on a good trend previous quarter. If CapEx disappears, uh, which is possible, we, don't, we have yet to see more evidence, um, then employment might be, growth might be delayed. And then we'll fall back into 150,000 per month job creation. That will be really disappointing for this stage of growth. And that will jeopardize 2015 growth. So we have this cycle of CapEx first, employment, sustainable growth. If CapEx is missing in this first half, um, that, that, would be a, that would be a key risk. Right now, I think the probability is quite low. But it's going to be played out in the next two months. Mortaza, thank you very much for joining us in the studio today. And that's all we have time for for now, but do check back later for further updates and interviews from the Duke Escopi TV team. Bye for now.